Now we're in the final Are you good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two of them. So I'm like, what the hell am I wearing? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'll make sure yeah, I'm not trying to. Let me know when we're ready. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 I want to let everyone know the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief where it is practical, difficulty, or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following the public hearing. Use variances request a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. If you would like to request the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, which we are down to board members tonight, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit comments to three minutes. All right. As stated before, we got everyone here but two people, Mr. Murphy, are missing Mr. Gavin and vacancy. the vacancy. But we do have a new person who's here to help you. Uh, so we'll let, we'll let Alex introduce to give a brief introduction of himself uh, as he is a new staff member. Sure. Oh, uh, thank you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, as Mr. Murphy said, I'm a new planner here. Um, I'm originally from the area. I grew up in Sterling Heights, so I'm very familiar with Oakland County. Um, previously to working here, I worked with DeWitt Charter Township in the Lansing area, and before that I worked as a planner in Northport, Florida. But I'm very happy to be here, and I'm happy for this opportunity, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. look forward to working with you, too. Thank you. All right. Uh, approval for the minutes of August 11, 2022. Is there any comments or additions to it, or do we have a motion for approval? Mr. Reddy. I move that we approve the minutes. Okay, is there a second? I'll support. Mr. Clint. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion okay. carries. Uh, we don't have any old or unfinished business <coughs> since last meeting. Uh, so we have new business, case number 22-09-27 for 700 South Main Street. Whenever you are ready, Mr. Murphy. This, this is currently a surface parking lot in downtown, and at the or July meeting, the Planning Commission granted site plan and special land use approval for Oakland Community College to build a three-story, almost 80,000 square foot building for their Culinary Arts Institute, and that elevation is displayed on the screen for you to look at. This, the site... does have a drive aisle off of 7th, and I'm going to zoom in on it to give you a better perspective, but it's their service area for deliveries, a ref, a pickup of refuse and deliveries for uh, food and other items. The width of that driveway at the property line, so approximately at the sidewalk, measures 36 feet in width, and the zoning ordinance require, allows for a maximum driveway width of non residential or commercial sites of, of 30 feet. So there, one of the contingencies of the Planning Commission's approval was for them to either minimize that driveway width to be compliant or to seek the necessary variance. So they are here today to seek the variance to have a driveway width wider than what is allowable for this location. Okay. Is there any questions for Mr. Murphy? All right, seeing none, the petitioner may uh, come forward and present their names in uh, their presentation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tracy Sweeney. I'm with HED, the architect firm that's working on the project. Um, somebody else prepared the presentation that we sent in for you guys. I'm going to try to do it much quicker than he would have done it and save us all a bit of time this evening. Um, when we presented for the site plan approval, uh, a large part of what we talked about is how this project is a benefit not only to OCC but to the city as well. 
Uh, part of that is if you are at all familiar with the existing service yard on Main Street for OCC, it is highly functional but not very pretty and certainly not the front door that Royal Oak would hope to have um, for the city. And so when the when OCC decided to go through the first phase of the master plan for the campus, part of the focus was to move the power plant and the entire receiving yard from its current location on Main Street to the 7th Street location that you see on the screen now. And so as we began to look at that, um, kind of the, the restrictions for OCC, if we were to try to turn that to the side, they lose a large portion of the site for future development. I mentioned earlier that this is the first phase of a master plan for the campus. And so there is additional work planned in future phases. So we focused on the ability, instead of having all of the traffic congestion on Main Street, to utilize um, Center Street as an opportunity for trucks to kind of turn up in that direction and then back into the service yard. There's enhanced function in the service yard. We're trying to accomplish an awful lot within a screened environment. So within that area that we're talking about with the 36 foot drive, we are incorporating a recessed truck dock, a separate space for another delivery vehicle, uh, traffic for their facilities department as well as all of the trash dumpsters for the site. So trash and recycling within that as well. We're conscious of the fact that there is a residential development directly across the street. So we're trying to be as attractive on that face as possible. Um, obviously improving the condition from Main Street, but um, you know, really making sure that it stays attractive for those on the north side as well. So here you can see a couple of the studies that were done for the truck movement, for trash movement as well, and for the recycle dumpster. And overall, granting us that additional six feet in width allows all of that activity to take place. If we start to reduce the driveway width in that place, we couldn't pack all of that stuff within the protected environment. And so we're faced with the choice of either putting some of it out at the street front, and I don't think anybody wants to be looking at dumpsters, et cetera, on the street front in that location, or unfortunately, um, kind of going back and looking at what we might be able to leave on the main street side, which is obviously not anybody's preference. So at this point, um, given that we are looking to the future for the development for the master plan, as well as looking to make the best possible environment for everybody with the current plan, we believe that we can accommodate all of those functions within the enclosed yard should we be able to add a couple of extra feet to the driveway width. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions for the petitioner? <coughs> all right. Seeing as there is none, just a reminder, we have um, down two board members. We still need a minimum of five affirmative votes. So after public comment, I'll ask you if you want us to proceed or we can delay it till next month when okay. we may have a full board, <laughs> we may not, so. Okay. Thank you very much. You're I'll welcome. step down for All right. Public comment is open. If you'd like to come forward, please state your name and your comments for the record. Anyone? No one? All right. Public comment is closed. Would you like us to proceed? Okay. Yes, All right. We'll bring it to this side of the board. Comments and or motions. Loud bunch today, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clatt. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Mr. Moore with a second. Go ahead, Mr. Clatt. Well, although you mentioned the presentation was lengthy, I appreciate the thoroughness. It really told the tale well, so thank you for that. Yeah, to me, it's a beautiful, beautiful design, too, so I commend you on that as well. And again, that was always the, the back side of the building, so I appreciate how you took advantage of. The new design really really uh, is well thought out and well placed. So any modification to that, I think I like the idea of, of concealing the trash enclosures back there. Any reduction of that drive will make it that much more difficult to maneuver the vehicles through. So it seems like a no-brainer to me. Mr. Moore, anything to add? Um, nothing. That's almost exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Anyone? Well, I, I'd like to say it was a great presentation as well as today too. And I actually thought you guys did a great job of just squeezing it down to 36 feet to get everything in there. Um, 
because I can see how tight that's going to be and appreciate the fact that you try to make it as best of a situation as possible. So uh, I, I think the practical difficulty is just the whole site itself and, and trying to incorporate all that. And because of that, I have no problem with going along with the variance that's requested. All right. See any other comments? Last call? All right. We'll move to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Best of luck to you. All right, next case, 22-09-28, 2501 North Campbell Road. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Murphy. This site should look familiar to board, <laughs> to board members. Back in 2021, last year, this site was created. This site, which fronts along North Campbell Road, is a vacant site that was created from a land division of a lot on North Wilson that's shown on the aerial photograph in, in front of you. Uh, the property has been sold and the new owner is seeking the opportunity to construct a new two-family dwelling unit. And I'm gonna jump to the some of their drawings to help our conversation. So they're proposing to construct a essentially three-story structure that includes two side-by-side -side dwelling units. Each of those units have a separate drive approach driveway and a front entry attached garage. The petitioner's proposed attached garages represent 64.1% of the front facade of the, of the structure. Under the zoning ordinance provisions, this site is in the two-family residential zoning district and in the two-family residential zoning district a maximum of, fifth of the accessory structures can represent no more than 50% of the primary or the front facade of, of the structure. In this instance, the proposal represents 64.1%. So they are seeking the variance of that difference in order to allow each of the units to have a one car wide attached garage. And we'll look at the floor plan, which will illustrate the, the width of the overhead door in comparison to the width of the the width of the garage itself and the front entrance doors that lead to the unit. So the door, the overhead garage door is a fairly standard width at nine feet, uh, but we do take the width of the floor plan related to the accessory structure or attached garage. And so that measures wider than the garage door itself. But they're seeking a variance in order to continue to keep this design and move forward in obtaining a building permit to construct this new two-family dwelling. Okay. Is there any questions for Mr. Murphy? Go ahead, Mr. Is Sukin. there anything in the zoning of two-family here that would prevent a single-family home? No. Uh, single-family home and two-family are both permitted uses in the two-family residential zoning district. If you, if you recall, mm -hmm. uh, a while back, the property owner for Wilson was in front of the board seeking a variance request in order to split the portion of the property which fronts along Campbell. And they came in and applied for a variance request to be able to market it and construct a single family home. Mm -hmm. And so we had a staff had a very detailed conversation with them indicating to them that they would, it's in the two family residential zoning district. And if they were trying to market it as a single family home site, that's a totally different variance request that's needed than the variances from the building a two family unit. They said, yes, we would like to build a two, uh, market it as a single family home site. Mm -hmm. So they came, they got the variances, weren't able to sell it, uh, came back and asked for variances then from the two family standards and the board granted those variance requests and they have then sold it off to the current owner who uh, did apply for a building permit and was notified at that juncture that they didn't meet this particular ordinance uh, standard and would need to seek the variance. Okay, the second question. Since the overhead doors are only nine feet wide, in actuality then it's we wouldn't be seeing more than 50 percent of the front being covered by a garage door correct because you're looking at the 
floor plan that the garage door? The width of the entire structure is 36 feet. So if you are referencing simply the garage doors and their width, they, you are correct that they're each at nine feet in width, they would total half of that 36 feet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And the other, Mr. Clapp. I guess the last question, from a multifamily standpoint, I assume from a parking standpoint, they have one vehicle in the garage and the other one's on the driveway? Yes, That's that is two. that is allowed. That's what we'll refer to it as stadium style. And I don't know if engineers, is there any issue with the aprons? Looks like there's four that are converging. It's, it's a little bit unique how these driveway aprons kind of blend together here. Is that more of a... The, the site plan shows it. There's the two existing driveways and their aprons to the you know, the one to the north, the one to the south, and these two proposed kind of merge with the other two. It's a, it's a bit unique. It, it is, and we didn't get into the nuances of that with them at this point because the engineering division will be happy to do that uh, when they pay the fee if they get the variances they need to move forward, and the engineering division will apply the correct standards to that circumstance. So. We, we didn't make them go through the process of spending the time and energy to draw according to what the engineering division will end up telling them how to design it. So like for example, if we approve it and they decide to push the two doors closer together and do one driveway coming up the middle, that would be allowed? Sure. Okay. Then the last question, I always forget this, there's, there's no requirement or regulation in Royal Oak that forces the garage to be stepped back from the home. The garage can, can be flushed with the principal dwelling. Yes, or it can can project out no more than seven, seven feet, feet from the ground floor living space, provided that attached garage does not project into the minimum required setback. But it can be, okay. as it is presented, we'll say a flush. Thank so you. everything has that, all three levels or the whole plane uh, is all in the same plane, front plane, yes. Last question, so if, if they were uh Let's say they attempted to, I guess, park in the rear. They would need a, the drive would be, is that a minimum of 10 feet to get back to the, if they had to reduce the size of the house by 10 feet to get the driveway to go behind it. Eight feet. Eight feet, We okay. require a minimum driveway width of eight feet. Okay. But it wouldn't have to be too wide. It could just be a single eight foot driveway to get to the rear to park for the two units. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Um, it looks like we have five feet on either side of the setback from the yes. house to the fence. Uh, yes, that's correct. And is that does is that minimum? I mean, can they go less than five feet? I, be I believe that is yes. At forty six feet in width, that's the lot width. The, the minimum required setback side yard setbacks are five. Feet. Five and five on correct. both sides. Whether that's a single family home, or in this case the duplex. Okay. Any other? Questions for Mr. Murphy. All right, seeing none, the petitioner may come forward, state their name, and present their case. So, I'll be translating for the um, petitioner. This is Helena. She's the owner of the property. I'm Galina Subulak. And this is Sergei. Sergei's the one who actually did the print and um, designed it. And um, I was also the broker involved uh, that helped the uh, gentleman on um, uh, rezone the property from single family residential to, to um, duplex. And you guys were nice enough to grant it to us, along with a couple of set, uh, setback requirements. And so when Sergei was designing the property, and try to fit the duplex in there, it was challenging given the fact that it's a 46 foot lot. I mean, usually you have to have at least 50. So, um, but he fitted as, as much as possible, but in order, and it, it was the most efficient way to, to do it this way because if you had a two car garage or whatever in the back with a driveway, then your duplex is even more narrow. So this was kind of like the most efficient way to do it. But we do have a couple of, you know, fairly minor issues. I mean, this is one of them, the um, the, the, uh, the garage, the waiver of the um, 50 foot down to 46. And we had another one, it's not on the on the list, it was a cantilever um, that's go, going out seven feet, that's that's um, gonna be considered part, uh, part of the 30% lot coverage. 
it's it's being used in it. We're we're gonna ask. It's not on here for some reason. I thought we were gonna talk about that today too, but we're gonna ask if that could be waived as well. And the reason for that one is because the when you're designing, and you're taking into consideration the uh, the overhang as part of the coverage, the interior bedrooms become like seven foot. They're they're like very narrow. So if we can waive that, then we can have like nine foot bedrooms. So, but that's a different story. Right now we're talking about the garage. So we did determine that the overhang along the back the second story that projects out we did determine that it did not need a variance oh it's not okay yes, yes. so it, it what it, what is presented is is allowable okay that's good we took a second look at it and determined that it did not okay i appreciate that okay. did uh any more of your presentation or that that was it okay is there any questions for the petitioner mr moore is this a home that the petitioner is planning to live in? Like, do you plan to live in one of the units? Maybe my daughter. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for the petitioner? All right. Okay. Yes, Ms. Sugan. Um, did you consider putting a single family house in there? I can't hear, I can't hear each one. Did you consider putting a single family house in that lot? Well, we. We talked about that during the variance um, meeting back in um, on a Zoom call back during COVID, and I had it up for sale for three, four months. And 99% of the people called me, asked me if that zoning is multiple family, because literally on that side of Campbell, every single property is multiple family. And then this here, you got this like, uh, you know, sticking out like a sore thumb property, it's single family. And it's narrow too, it's only 46 foot wide. So that's why we asked for the variance to, to so that it's zoned what the rest of the properties on that side of Campbell are zoned. Yeah, but the rest so, of the properties are are ranch style and they're wider. Right. A lot yeah, wider than yeah. your lot, so. There, yeah, a lot of them are ranch. So we, 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 we were 46 feet, we could only go up. We, we didn't have too many options. Right. Mr. Clatt? I guess somewhat in line with Ms. Zukin's question, when it comes to, you know, we're dealing with the garage width, right? Did you attempt to design to maybe break it up a bit more by, right now it's, it's pretty flat across the front and it will stick out like a sore thumb based on the low rise homes next to it. But did you explore any ways to maybe break the massing up a bit more? Maybe, I don't want to suggest design options here, but pulling the garage. I know there's some bit of cantilever there, but any way to help break it up a bit to make it less imposing at the street? Maybe stepping the vent the doors back or doing something to help break it up a bit more? Well, when so there was designing the, the duplex the goal was to try to um we got we basically have our building envelope right we have our setbacks requirements we're limited by um you know how we can park and how you know how we can uh, back the car out because it's on campbell it's a main road there's a lot of challenges on this property so you know when we were like looking for ways to design the property it was kind of going up was like the only thing that we could Think of because I mean you, I mean you really can't do a ranch there unless you do some kind of sideway narrow ranch, you know. So uh, we were kind of limited, so we just we tried to maximize with the lot coverage that we were given. We tried to put in there as much, uh, maximize you know the the use as best as we can. Now I understand that, but for example, adding a porch or those two front doors, that's bringing that piece out, it's adding another roof line, another element to help soften that facade, because it's, it's a blank wall. So that's my only question, is there a way to, to help break that massing up a bit so it's not so imposing at the street? Uh, I would have to go back to talk about, you know, with the architecture about it. Thank you. All right, any other questions for the petitioner? Yes. I just have one. What is, what is the square footage, the livable square footage of each individual unit? 1,300 square feet? No, no, it is... There is a number. 16 on each side? Uh, around 16, 1,600 probably. 1,600 on each side. Okay. okay. Anyone over here questions? All right, seeing no more questions, we're going to open up to public comment. After which, I'll ask you if you want us to proceed. We're down two board members. You need five affirmative votes. So you can either delay till next month, where we might have a full board, or we might be the same case we're at this month. So think about that. After public comment, you can let me know what you want us to do. Okay. 
All right, public comment for this. Please come forward, state your name in uh, comments for the record, if you have any. Going once, twice. All right, three times again. No public comment. Would you like us to go forward, or would you like to delay it a month? So you're you're saying you're two members short today? Or? Yes. Well, you have seven, and you need five. And you need members. five. Mm -hmm. And there's no guarantee you'll have eight or nine next month. It might be seven again. So I'd say let's do it today. Okay. All right. We'll pull it to the side of the board. Comments and/or motions. Mr. Moore. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with because, you know, we've seen this a, a couple of times and we grant lot splits like this and they always, not always, but, you know, they come back and they have requirements because they cannot fit a certain way on the lots. And, and looking at the non-use variants, um, Letter A, you know, the condition there that this chapter's restrictions unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose. I mean, they could build a single family home here. Um, they could build something where the garage is in the back. You know, I, I just, I, I feel like there are other purposes that could be done on the slot. So, so is that a... No, I'm, I'm just okay. stating my comments okay. right now. Hey, Mr. Clint. Yeah, I struggle a bit too, and you know, my, my comments were design related, and I know that's not what we're here to do at the zoning board to critique design, but I do I do think we're talking about the garage width. There's some impact here that softening could help, but I also understand the challenges. The board did allow we did allow the lot to be split. It is zoned multifamily, so any developer is going to try to maximize density. So here, two is the most you're going to get based on the allowable height and the allowable width of the lot. So I, I see the I understand that. I also understand that these two units are, are you can't get them any narrower. You can't make it any narrower. You know, 18 feet is pretty limited, so I, so I also understand that. So it's a tough one. I mean, you, you do need to park. The garages make sense. Trying to get a driveway around the side of the building is really going to make that much tighter. That was my first thought. Can you sneak a driveway around, park in the rear, reduce the garage? But that's going to that's gonna make that really narrow, really skinny. You don't have the, the, the depth to really make those units any larger. So I'd like to hear the rest of the board's comments, but those are my concerns. You know, if, in my opinion, if the facade was softened a bit, I may have been a bit more on board earlier, but I'd like to hear the rest of your thoughts. Ms. Sukin? All right. Um, I am like, also conflicted. I don't like the design, but that's not what I'm here for. Um, the only issue is really the garage width. Um, and I think the purpose of that was originally to have it not look like you're driving down an alley. Um, and the fact that these garage doors are only nine feet wide makes it 50%. So even though I prefer to see something smaller, I think I might have to um, suggest that it's something we should approve. Ms. Robinson? Um, I'm, have all, I, I do not like straight facing garage doors because of what it does with the life of people that live in Royal Oak. It just, it brings, like, it looks like an alley and it's like not people sitting on the front porch kind of thing. So my first response is saying, I don't know, that this is too much garage door on the street side. However, I see that there's some real difficulty with this, such a narrow lot that there's no other way how you're going to do that. You got to have a garage. You got to put your car in the garage. You got to have a place to park. But that front-facing garage, I'm, uh, someone puts that in front of me, my first response is to say no. I do like the idea of if there was something more that softened that look or something that change the fact that you're just going to come home, pull your car in the garage, shut the door, and there you go. You never interact with your neighbors. Softening it, like having some kind of a porch there, you know, over the door or a combination porch or something, that would make me feel a lot more conducive to this design, to having garage doors facing the street. Ms. Samantha, or Ms. Grant, I should say. 
Um, I do think there is something to be said about the fact that they're not asking for any uh, like lot dimension or setback requirements. Like they really did try to keep the envelope of the building within those requirements and because of that, um, and because the lot is so narrow, I feel like that's why these garage doors are taking up more than 50%. And I agree that, I mean, you only see the garage door portion of it, which is 50% of it, so that's my comment. Mr. Reddy, were you gonna? Yeah, I think I'm gonna echo um, what I've heard other people say, that they're a little conflicted, but we did grant the variance and we didn't grant the variance to this petitioner, we granted it to someone else. So now you've got the lot at 46 feet, you gotta put two garages in. So this seems like probably the best we could do. This seems like. Is there a motion at all? Mr. Reddy. <laughs> I'll, make the motion to I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. Okay, is, I'll take you a second. Okay, Mr. Clatt. Again, with, with all the comments that have been, been made and suggested, and, and for what I've said as well, it's a tough one here. It's, there's not much more you can really do. So, again, I made the motion to approve. I would just ask that you, or hope that you would take a look at the facade and maybe look at some ways to soften that up, either through window placement, overhangs, porches, something along that line to help fit in better on the Campbell Street side. So I just you know, ask you to, to take a look at that, but did you make a motion to approve? Okay. Mr. Reddy, anything to add? Um, no, just that, you know, it is a unique lot and that it's, it's narrow and that's directly related to the variance that's being requested, so. Any other comments? Mr. Moore? I'll just say Mr. Reddy has a good point. It wasn't the petitioners who created this issue that, you know, they just re recently purchased it, so I'll support the motion. Okay. Any other comments? Well, I'll be in favor of this uh, variance. Granted, I agree that design may not be the most preferred, but I also agree with Mizukin, which is at the 50%, if you took the garage door, they're only 50% of the whole entire facade the more than 50% is per each house. So looking at the facade, it looks 50%. And if you broke it up, that would actually make the garage door look more than 50% when you break it up. So I'm torn on that, but I agree it look, would be nice to have something different, but that's not what we're here for. It's only for the practical difficulty of this being a narrow lot that we prove, previously approved. And also knowing that this is a two family area to try and get anything to sneak around that backside and still give you a valuable, usable two-story house is going to be really hard to do. So this petitioner is faced with the practical difficulties of that lot and of the requirements of getting a two-family in there. And I think them just doing nine-foot garage instead of coming to us with a 10-foot, 12-foot garage, they did the best they could do to keep it within the, that limit and keep it down. So because of that, I don't have a problem with approving this variance. All right, if there's no other comments, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. <coughs> Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next case, number 2209. Dash 29 for 29806 Woodward Avenue. Whenever you are ready, Mr. Murphy. This site needs no introduction. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, this Palms Motel has 26 units, and the petitioner is proposing to modify and reuse the building for 20 individual apartment units. The site is in the general business zoning district. Residential dwelling units are uh, per permissible as a special land use when they're above a first floor permitted or special land use like an office or retailer. Um, they're allowed on upper levels but not uh, an entirely um, on the ground floor or uh, floors <coughs> above an apartment complex. So the petitioner is seeking a use variance in order to convert this structure into an apartment complex. So the board should first vote on the use variance and determine the appropriateness of that 
uh, if you do grant the use variance, there are subsequent non-use variances that would apply as well, and we'll go through those. Are there are questions for Mr. Murphy. Well, I can go through. The, I, oh, I'll go through. I'll go, yeah, it's okay. I'll go through everything. But I, I think once it gets to yeah, right. um, actual an actual vote, the, the first item would be to address the use. Yep. Uh, Sorry, I thought you were done. That's with okay. That. That's all right. Uh, we do, uh, staff does apply the standards for a multifamily development as if this were in the correct zoning designation for a multiple family. And multiple family residential dwelling units require two parking spaces per unit, regardless of the size of the unit and the number of, or the number of bedrooms associated with the unit. So there are 20 apartment units that are proposed and subsequently they are required to provide 40 parking spaces. The site plan that the petitioner has devised provides 18 parking spaces and it is a different parking arrangement than what is currently found on site. We can look at an aerial photograph to give you a differing the viewpoint of what's there versus what they're proposing. What they're proposing is two separate drive aisles that access um, parking spaces at 90 degrees and there is no internal drive aisle that for circulation to get it through the site. Uh, one would have to go out the southernmost and come into the northernmost if all the parking spaces in the southern portion of the parking lot were already taken. Zoning ordinance provisions do require a minimum size uh, of living space based on whether it's an efficiency, one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom unit. And I'll flip to their floor plan. The overwhelming majority of the units that are being proposed would be, uh, would be efficiencies and they would be 245 square feet of living space. The minimum required living space for an efficiency under the zoning ordinance is 250. So they're close, but they don't meet that standard. So they're seeking a variance of five square feet from that standard for a fair number of units. The site does have a second story walkway that accesses the upper units. And that's shown on the, obviously in the photograph or the site itself, but on the petitioner's rendering. There is a particular one of concern, and that is at the southwest corner of the building, and I'll hover over it. It projects five and a half feet out into the drive aisle. So the zoning ordinance requires there to be a two-way drive aisle at, at this portion of the site in order to access the parking spaces. And the minimum re required width for a two-way drive aisle is 20 feet. That's provided at the ground floor, but about seven and a quarter inches above ground we find that the second story walkway uh, projects five and a half feet out into that 20 foot drive aisle. And at only seven, a little over seven feet in height, that's, that's of concern. Uh, we did do an analysis um, thinking about different building types that, that do have lower clearances. Um, but this particular site at that height it would present a challenge if someone were already in the drive aisle coming out of the site, if, if a vehicle was coming in and it was a box van, a moving van, it is a, clearly taller than seven feet in height and it would unquestionably clip and, and hit that, um, that second story walkway. Certain buildings such as parking structures or canopies for fast food drive facilities, they're inherently lower, but they also have a height clearance bar in front of them and indications that there's uh, a concern to drivers that have over vehicles of a larger than a standard height, that they should be aware that they're entering a building that has a lower clearance. So it's not as though we, we don't, uh, we prohibit buildings with a lower height of entering a vehicle, but there's always a designation there's always a warning for a motorist. In this case, there isn't. And so we have major concern that someone will undoubtedly uh, run into that portion of the building. We had conversations back and forth with the petitioner and uh, they, they 
determined that they wanted to seek the variance as opposed to modifying that portion of the building to eliminate it. it I'll let them speak further, but it's a not, that portion, let's refer to the floor plan, that portion of the building is not integral to accessing uh, the apartment units. And that'll be made clear when I bring up on the screen the floor plan, the second story floor plan. This is the second story floor plan, and this is the portion uh, that was shown in the rendering, and it projects out again five and a half feet into that dry aisle. There's, there is a door to, I believe, um, there's a door to a unit, and there's a door to uh, what they haven't clearly identified, uh, but it's, they've indicated it might be a storage, a works, common workspace, and the doorway to that is not dependent upon that second story walkway which projects over the driveway so there's really no there uh, there is no functional need for that um, the petitioner can describe why they feel they want to retain it and it, as uh, the the walkway does jog closer to the building uh, as we go further into the parking lot and it that portion projects one foot into the 20 foot wide drive aisle. Staff doesn't have an, an, a real objection to that. Um, if someone were in a parking space already and they were backing out, uh, there is fair amount of clearance at 19 feet in, in width, not that 20, to back out and maneuver. But with someone's coming into the site with an, a vehicle that's taller than the average and someone is already trying to exit, uh, there's unquestionably going to be the point where someone will hit that side of the building. So we do object to that portion, uh, that rather that variance being granted, but not the second variance, which is again the remainder of the walkway, which is just one foot into the required 20 foot drive aisle. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Murphy? Uh, Mr. Reddy and then Mr. Um, I had a couple. I have a few actually. <laughs> um, so the first one is, I failed my reading comprehension. I thought they were all efficiencies. Um, do you know the number? I, I I don't know them. I think some of them were mislabeled on the floor plan as well. There there were some floor plan modifications okay. going around and uh, at the last minute, and so I. I didn't get a chance to have them note some corrections. So we'll let them address yeah. the, the, the exact percentage. And obviously that's relative to whether the board is willing to grant the parking variance yeah. at the request or, f uh, or less than that, if they're amenable to reducing the number of units, which would reduce the parking variance. Because it's, um, so it was, it's two spots no matter whether it, how many, how, how, how large it is. Yes, right? the Planning Commission did, rec uh, Side note, uh, the Planning Commission did request, I guess it was maybe almost a year and a half or two years ago now, time flies, uh, staff to research statistics on the average number of parking spaces for units that have been built in the last 10, 15, 20 years, um, and, and, al and an analysis of all those throughout time, all, all those in the city. And we did provide them with that, an that analysis. They did ask staff to move forward with some amendments that, to reduce that parking standard, but they did not take action on that. Okay. So it still stands at two per unit, regardless of the size of the unit. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just had some questions. Uh, this is ge right now. It's general business. It's a, and that some of those other uses would be what? Mm, wide variety. Uh, professional office, medical office, general retail sales, uh, re dining restaurants, carry out restaurants, restaurants with drive-throughs, financial institutions with drive-throughs, veterinary clinics. I, I can keep going, <laughs> but I think you get the picture. I do. <laughs> okay. Mr. Reddy. I have a couple more. Um, is the current use non-conforming? The I reason have... I ask is it seems very similar to the proposed use just by a matter of time, right? Like if you're, you know, people can live in these rooms now for, I think they would probably have weekly or monthly rates, you I know. 
I don't know if the current owner is present and they can describe their operation and how, how it might relate time frame wise to the proposal that the petitioner has in, in how they plan to operate it. But I think it's a fair point to ask the petitioner how they plan to operate in a traditional sense where someone typically rents for at least a year and then whether it's their month thereafter or signing an, an extension of some longer degree. But I think it would be fair to ask them that. And perhaps, uh, perhaps Mr. Bohorski can take a look in, in the meantime and answer your first question as to whether a motel is currently uh, permitted special end use or neither of those in the general business zoning district. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Oh, Ms. Grant? Um, as far as the drive aisle, I know there's, uh, generally there's like fire lanes. Do you think the fire marshal would deny that anyway? Like, say, if we granted the waiver, would they say no to it? They did have the, the opportunity to look at this, and they didn't have any any concern. Since, uh, I, and I'm going to um, make some assumptions, uh, is that there's no way to drive entirely through the site, yeah. and it's not that far from the edge of the sidewalk to the building itself. So they might bring in an ambulance yeah. and then back it straight out, but they ain't gonna bring the, the, the big giant fire apparatus because there's no way to do an actual turn on the property itself. And many of the runs that they do make are also from the public alley, which the building abuts. Okay. Right. Mr. Clip. And this has not been in front of the Planning Commission yet. No, because it requires a use variance uh, and the subsequent non-use variances, it's appropriate for this board to act prior to moving forward to the Planning Commission. So even if we vote to approve the variances, use variances and some of the parking related variances, the Planning Commission still could have an issue with some of the clearances, correct? And potentially could deny they could. Based on their concerns related to that. They could, but I think it's appropriate for this board to, to act on the variance request. Yes. Any other questions for Mr. Murphy? All right, seeing none, may the petitioner come forward and present their case in the name. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, board members, uh, I just want to confirm before we start, we are presenting on all five variances rather than just one at a time? Yep. Okay. All right. So, good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Kevin Heffernan of Stonefield Engineering. We are the civil engineer and consultant on the project. Um, address 607 Shelby Street, uh, Suite 200, Detroit, Michigan. Joined here today by the project architect, uh, Andrew and Nikki and Jeffrey Best of Stucky Vitale Architects, you, who you may be familiar with, um, as they are also maybe half mile or so uh, south of this uh, subject site, um, as well as uh, Norris uh, Shaba, um, the project sponsor. So looking at um, what we have here today, uh, we're excited to be here again. Um, We've had uh, the chance to collaborate with the city on a number of projects, uh, specifically the team rehab up at Woodward and 14 Mile, as well as uh, the under construction Tommy's Express Car Wash um, just south of there. Um, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're excited to collaborate with both the city and uh, Stucky Vitale as uh, we've been involved with them on a number of these projects as well. Uh, we're here presenting the redevelopment and restoration of this former Palms Motel and seeking a few variances to t try and help revitalize this key uh, parcel along the Woodward Corridor. So everyone in Royal Oak, uh, I believe Mr. Murphy let off that this uh, site needs no introduction. Um, at, a mi at a very minimum, is vaguely familiar with the Palms Motel and is a prominent location and its signage along Woodward. Uh, like many sites along the corridor, it's a need of a well, dire need of a new facelift. So uh, we have the opportunity to kind of blend some of the city's ideals as well as our project's um, goals as uh, the developer and the project team. Um, so quick overview of the existing conditions. Uh, we have the closed, uh, or uh, the two-story motel uh, on a more or less worn out site. 
an all too familiar situation uh, to the citizens of Royal Oak driving up and down the Woodward Corridor. Um, and more or less out of date architecturally, uh, but the overall bones and structural integrity of this uh, building are in good standing. Uh, we have 18 parking spaces on site, including six angled parking spaces that are of use um, in the little parking area just on the east side of Woodward. Um, the use is, um, apologies, uh, the proposed conversion to the two-story apartment building. Uh, we're proposing 20 units, uh, where there are currently 26 units in the motel. Uh, we're looking to fully gut and thoroughly clean the building, refinish the interior, the exterior with more bright, uh, vibrant, and inviting colors and materials. Uh, we're proposing 18 parking spaces with an additional four parallel spaces on Woodward uh, for a total of 22 spaces for the use. Uh, beyond the building, we're looking to remove the pylon sign. We're looking to resurface the parking lot, proposed landscaping beds with flowering shrubs and perennials uh, within the, the interior space between the parking lot and the units themselves. And we're proposing new full cutoff LED lighting, uh, wall mounted fixtures to illuminate the site adequately while not um, provide any uh, negative effects to the tenants or adjacent users. So um, without further ado, I'm just gonna hand it off to Andrew to go over a couple of the architectural details and bring you guys up to speed with the uh, facelift of this building. Thank you, Howard. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Nicky with Stucky Vitale Architects. Um, Kevin did a good job, I think, of putting uh, together kind of the, the parameters for this particular project. Again, everybody said it multiple times, very familiar with the site. Our intent, as Kevin had mentioned, is to, to, to work with the existing bones of the structure. What you see here is exactly the same exact footprint of the building, first floor, second floor. We're not intending to uh, demolish, remove any of the exterior elements other than to remove and reclad the finishes on the exterior or stain the existing brick. The big item uh, here that we're trying to do is, is take that kind of dated look, revitalize it, kind of create it for uh, a very youthful, vibrant, urban uh, atmosphere along Woodward within the existing uh, building itself. Uh, on the uh, first sheet, there's a rendering that shows uh, in addition on the um, site plan as well to kind of create this buffer zone and that's kind of our big move and our big element that you can see there. Uh, right now, as you're driving down Woodward, obviously you see essentially right into the rooms, right into the doors. What we're trying to do is, in addition to the horizontal rail to kind of block that, that view into the residence, is to kind of create this, uh, what I would call a Zen garden, almost a feel along the busy uh, drive of Woodward with uh, uh, what we propose is kind of like a you know, a six foot tall uh, wall with maybe even a core 10 type of structure on there, gravel, landscape, an area for the residents themselves to utilize, kind of pull out from that smaller micro apartments uh, and, and engage with the environment. So I guess for the full uh, project description and uh, overview, uh, getting right into the variances. The first variance that we're seeking is for the use type uh, to kind of piggyback off of what Mr. Murphy said. Um, proposed multifamily apartment units are especially in use when on the second floor above a permitted use within the general business zone. So essentially we're looking for a use variance for the first floor apartment units. Um, when you're looking for a use variance, the city has five key criteria that you have to meet. And we've kind of gone through each one and we've kind of, the more we looked into it, the more that we realized that we aligned with not only these five criteria, but the goals of Royal Oak and its um, master plan. So the first criteria, the word for word is, the property cannot be reasonably used for purposes permitted in the zone. Looking at our site, uh, the residential dwelling units, are, um, they're, a, like I said, we're essentially looking for the first floor multifamily use, and the goal of our project is to reutilize this existing building in its entirety. Um, unfortunately, the shell doesn't lay out well when looked at other permitted uses, a um, couple that Mr. Murphy has gone over right before we stood up, um, especially in the current orientation uh, to the roadway, uh, i.e. building at some points is only 14 feet in width, 
other point 17 feet of width as well as low nine foot ceilings it really wouldn't work for too many of uh, the permitted retail commercial uses in the zone and then that this use uh, requested uh, the variance it really wouldn't alter the essential characteristics of the area so secondly the appeal results from unique circumstances to are peculiar to the property and not in general neighborhood conditions Looking into that, you know, this existing building is framed uh, for this type of use. Obviously, it's not too far off from the existing motel use. Um, one main thing that we have run into is the parcel has limited depth and the buildable area not ideal for the other permitted uses, as well as, um, you know, most uses in these areas, they are lot line to lot line block buildings, very limited parking, and they kind of max out uh, the site's uh, buildable area. Obviously, reusing the existing shell and providing ample parking for the use uh, does not really align with that. So, um, so thirdly, uh, the third criteria is that the use requested the variance would not alter the essential characteristics of the area. Um, this use, like I previous, previously stated, the use is really akin to the area. Um, it'll bring long-term residents rather than the transient residents that you see today in motel use. Um, the intensity, the setbacks, the traffic patterns, they all remain more or less unchanged and familiar to the area. Uh, not only adjacent businesses, but also the residential, uh, uh, our residential neighbors over on the east side of the alley. Um, one other thing I'd like to note is, you know, this isn't this isn't the first time that we've seen a property or proposal or project of this nature. Um, there are other projects uh, up and down Woodward that have similar layouts and similar issues that have been uh, solved here, i.e., um, the Woodward Court Apartments, just a few projects south, and the HW condominiums just south of Lincoln and north of the zoo property. The very uh, similar projects, while they might be larger in stature, they were able to find some solutions by vacating the rear alley and converting them to parking and using the angled parking out front, kind of banking on that for its users as well. Two solutions that unfortunately aren't viable for our site. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to bank on for this third criteria is that we should really treat the city's master plan and its vision statements uh, as pertinent guide to these hearings. Um, or if we were to use them as pertinent guide to these hearings, we would be remiss to uh, go over and just kind of, you know, as I said, we looked into the vision statements and the goals, and we'd be remiss to not uh, understand that the city's goals really do offer a nice blend with our project goals here. So just a few of them, um, as you'll see, I'll read them off. Uh, you'll see how they really do align with this project. Uh, from the city's master plan, they recommend creative redevelopment concepts for underutilized properties in the corridor. They prioritize adaptive reuse to contribute to the city's historic character and the community at large, uh, to protect the character of viable neighborhoods by preventing intense uses, to increase Woodward parking, to prioritize buffering from neighborhoods, to remove seedy businesses, uh, once again, the city's words, not mine, and reduce sign clutter and increase uniformity along the Woodward corridor, uh, fewer motels in Royal Oak, improve Woodward Avenue appearance, uh, quality of business and parking along the Woodward corridor, promote the use of small scale multiple family to create an intimate, intimate and friendly setting, and a moratorium to fast food and carry out users due to traffic concerns. So, you know, as you go through those, we were kind of shocked at how well as you read them and kind of go through how they align with this uh, project. Um, but anyways, the fourth criteria is that the alleged hardship has not been created by any person having interest in this property. Um, Norris, uh, the applicant, is not uh, the original builder, the original owner, and he's only looking to renovate, renovate this parcel. Um, and then fifth, that the use will preserve a substantial property right possessed by other property owners in the same zone. The new use, uh, it'll only be a benefit to the other adjacent users. Um, not only uh, will it improve the characteristics of the site, it'll also reduce competition and bring a further customer base to the adjacent users in the Woodward uh, 
right of way. Um, so onward, uh, the second of our five variances. Uh, we're proposing a total of 22 spaces for 20 units where 18 are on site and four are within the Woodward right of way, um, where 40 are required by code. Uh, one thing I'd like to note is obviously we've been up here before. Everyone knows that there is a parking shortage along the Woodward uh, roadway. And time and time again, uh, new revitalization, revitalization projects uh, come into this conflict. So proposing micro apartments, we would assume that these are all studio apartments, one bed, one user, uh, one resident. The idea uh, of the project was originally just to have smaller competitive apartments for local workers. Um, the idea is uh, specifically centered at places such as uh, like the Beaumont uh, Health Complex, where you do have a lot of workers in the area. Um, so, and then Woodward is kind of primed for this ride sharing, this public transit and bike routes. Not only do we see that in some of the other apartments uh, up and down Woodward, but throughout the city as a whole. And due to this kind of peculiar lot and the building, we do have limited space on site. Uh, we did try and reuse the parking lot to the greatest extent possible while also kind of updating the area with the perennial beds, the Zen garden, and uh, removing the sign, removing any unnecessary striping and trying to really maximize what we have existing on site. So um, I know that there was a question about data regarding uh, parking uh, for these type of uses. Uh, I did look into this. Um, generally, if there is a parking variance, what most developers or most uh, cities will bank on is ITE data, um, which is kind of the interstate uh, national traffic and engineering code. Um, if you look further into it, the apartments, they're actually not based on the number of beds, which is surprising, or number of rooms. So it doesn't go by studio, single bed, uh, double. It actually goes by um, being defined as an urban or non-urban setting. Obviously the urban would need less parking due to the public transit, as well as being within a half mile or greater than a half mile public transit. Just as a uh, fact of safety, we assume that this would be in a suburban setting, as well as farther away than half a mile of a uh, public transit, and just just as a factor of safety, yeah. And it uh, actually comes out to you need about one bed, or you need exactly one bed, or one parking spot per bed. So for in the case of this uh, project, we're assuming that these are studio apartments, single beds, one space per um, bed. The 20 uh, units, we have 22 available. So um, the dwelling unit uh, variants we'll get into. Um, Next, I just had actually, as I'm going through this, I have one other thought, and that is um, as we were going through uh, the project, um, sorry, I lost my place here. Um, the similar, yeah, okay, so yeah, the similar sites did find uh, solutions by vacating and annexing the rear alley, sorry, as well as utilizing the Woodward frontage, and I just wanted to really hammer in that, you know, these are options that we really would look for and unfortunately can't uh, have on site. So the moving forward to the third variance we're seeking, the dwelling unit area variance for these efficiency units. Um, 250 square feet is required where we propose a 245, a shortage of five uh, square feet. Unfortunately, um, due to the project's goals, we're reusing this existing building. Uh, believe it or not, there are 26 units and we are combining some of them, losing them for gym, laundry, other uses. Um, and we're really confined to the bones of the structure, therefore having that five foot um, shortage. And then I, I would be able to combine, you know, the fourth and fifth variances as they are similar, uh, seeking the overhang variance for five and a half feet as well as one foot on that south side. And really we're, we're requesting these waivers um, to allow for the unrestricted uh, 20 foot parking aisle. Um, we requested the balcony to remain as part of the existing structure and no larger trucks are anticipated here. As we said, a fire truck would most likely stay out in the Woodward right away, as well as any trash trucks would stay within the alley along the rear. And um, the idea would be if there were larger trucks on moving days or whatnot, those would also be taken care of in the rear. And then just for um, reference, uh, we did look into some of the larger trucks, say an F-150 is about uh, just between six and six and a half feet. So would be a little bit of clearance there. 
Um, we're, we're looking to keep that, um, that seven foot clearance. It's more of dressing up. It kind of, um, is part of our overall goal to really dress up this building and present the city with a product that it would be, uh, proud of as we have, you know, our own residents and then residents from neighboring communities coming up this, um, up the Woodward corridor. So yes, uh, thanks for bringing that up. So you kind of see how the facade, it's a, it's a little bit of our uh, goal to dress up um, this existing uh, building. And then, um, you know, just in conclusion, we truly do believe that we're bringing a, um, another great project to the city, one that promotes uh, the not always com common plus plus relationship between the city uh, and its goals with the master plan and its mission statements, as well as our goals as a project team and developer. Um, we're really looking forward to adding another beautiful building in our neighborhood and you know, not, a, not just one of the county's most recognizable roads, but the states. So in closing, thanks for everyone's time. We're here to field any questions. Thank you. Questions for the petitioner, Mr. Moore. Um, oh, wait a second. Oh, go, no, go ahead. Mr. Chair, I would just like to take the time right now to uh, acknowledge Mr. Reddy's previous question in regards to the current property use. Um, so as it stands per the zoning ordinance, uh, a motel is neither a permitted nor a special land use in the general business zoning district. So the property is currently legal non-conforming. Thank you. Mr. Moore. So regarding your parking, um, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, you can't claim the Woodward side spots that you're mentioning in your account. So mm -hmm. essentially you have 18 available um, to your building here. Are you anticipating that some of these residents won't have a car at all or are not going to have overnight guests or we are it's uh, more or less a blend um while there are 18 i believe the goal is to have those 18 spaces as designated per user so everyone will have their own spot um that kind of also plays into the fact that we have that overhang for the fourth and fifth variances it'll all be uh familiar common residences in those spots but um furthermore uh you know while we took the fact the uh the factor of safety for the one spot per bed. Uh, we do imagine that some of these users, they'll be local workers, they'll be looking to uh, use public transit, the bike routes, um, and you know other modes of transportation uh, rather than their own vehicle. Okay, and I do have one more question regarding the parking. Mm -hmm. um, the aerial photograph we have here shows angled parking, and what's being proposed is for parallel spots instead of, I'm counting, I think there's 10 angled parking spots there. What, what is facilitating that change? So those angled parking spaces are actually also legal non-conforming, uh, just based on dimensions. We've all been in a case where we're trying to stop and, uh, you know, stop the going in and back out right into Woodward, you feel like you're gonna pop over the mountable curb. Um, so as part of our design with um, our communications with the city's plan department, we kind of came to the central conclusion that we should replace those. Originally we were going to land bank the parking, but you know, uh, one, to benefit the site and kind of meet the city's goals for more parking along Woodward Corridor, uh, we decided as a middle ground uh, to provide parallel parking. So not only will this affect um, our use, but it'll affect all, also our neighbors. Okay. I'll add to that that petitioner's correct. We had various correspondence back and forth about, we'll say, what to do with the adjacent public right away. And if the Michigan, since it's the, in the Michigan Department of Transportation's right away, uh, according to their standards, if they had their way, there would be no parking. Uh, in mm -hmm. along this segment uh, and overwhelming majority of Woodward Avenue. Okay. They would not even allow under their design standards to have the two driveways in is such close proximity as as they have shown on their site plan. So we try as staff to be a, a mediary between the hard and fast standards of MDOT and the petitioners wants and 
trying to correct what's there. Obviously, as what was noted, the angled parking spaces that are there don't meet any standards whatsoever. Um, so we were in conversation with the petitioner about what could possibly be modified. At a minimum, parallel spaces do work, but should the board grant the necessary variances, it will go forward to the Planning Commission and the Planning Commission will have the ultimate say as to uh, access points and what they would like to see the adjacent right away with uh, look and function like. Okay, thanks. So in all reality, we almost have to imagine there may be no parking spots entirely because the planning could sit. True, or, or uh, some stroke of luck, there's a gigantic funding source that comes along, or a millage passes for some type of transit, and Woodward in and of itself becomes entirely different from what it looks like today, and that's done at a, outside of the any authorization that we have because it's not city's public right away. Correct. So it could change never, as is pretty evident as to what's there now, uh, or it could change at any point in the future. Okay. Yep. Mr. Clark. I guess I'm a little confused on that parking too. As you mentioned those three parallel spaces to the south, but those look like they extend beyond your property line in front of the designer consigner space. Is, is that property owned? by you as well or you're impacting their parking by suggesting parallel right now they're enjoying it looks like more than two or three mm -hmm. i think that also plays the conversations that we had uh with the planning department and what to do in this area um one find an alternate uh solution to the legal non-conforming uses but you're right um, a lot of times that is uh subject in site plan approval um where you're not allowed to extend past the boundaries of your site, you know, if you extend them out to the center of the roadway. Um, but we do find that that would be a, um, a good solution to what is um, currently existing out there. Obviously, there would be different avenues we have to go through for those final approval of that layout. And then as you see, it's separate, it's different on the north side um, as, you know, you get closer to the driveways. It's uh, kind of a different scenario, so. I guess one more question too, and this is for variance item D, mm -hmm. and that's the 5.5 foot reduction of that drive lane. So looking at the, I'm trying to read the drawings and I understand looking at the, the uh, street view of the existing building, that's primarily due to that, that balcony at the, that'd be the southwest corner, that existing balcony that protrudes out. I believe that's what's causing that issue, mm -hmm. correct? Looks like that might be a, some kind of precast plank, possibly, that comes out there. Is there, have you considered cutting that back, if it can be cut back structurally, to maybe help reduce that variance request? I know it's going to kill a balcony up there, but yeah, it might help. Mr. Murphy had a good point. Yeah. Vehicles are turning in there now. Could they clip that corner? So it's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. Can that be cut back to alleviate that? So, so to your point, yes, it is precast structure and precast plank. So. Uh, we could, if we needed to, cut that off, but because it's in an existing condition and it provides an added depth to the structure that's that's already there, it would we feel that it would be a hardship and actually kind of uh, poor for the building facade and amenity for the residents there to have this opportunity to turn the corner, go out, have an overlook out onto to Woodward. Uh, for the dream cruise or even anything on that to have this ability to look somewhere else and kind of create this little nook out there for it had that not existed and this been uh, uh you know brand new construction or we were tacking on it completely understand the, the the comment about taking it off and not including it and as it being an encroachment but because it is existing because it is a precast plank that is cantilevered out it would be a substantial modification to it so that's why we were requesting that variance to leave it as is thank you mm -hmm. Other questions? Ms. Lucan. You said that you anticipate assigning those 18 spaces to residents, correct? If you have full occupancy of 20, what do you do about the other two residences? Right, I guess the uh, anticipation uh, for the project is that not all users will be having a car. Um, you'll see a lot of the apartments up and down the Woodward Corridor, uh, a lot of the residents do bank on um, the public transit or um, bike routes. Uh, I wish I had the data in front of you to say what percent of them. Um, but I do believe, you know, this is something that was 
obviously center point to even the start of the project uh, where they had 26 units we have slowly dwindled down to 20 and um, we've only had 18 spaces on site so to maximize um, those spaces we're trying to reuse the parking lot to the greatest extent possible but and if I could add to that also, mm -hmm. as far as what the owner has talked about for the 18 spaces to assign that to an individual, those would be a perk for those particular uh, residents that would be living there. And yes, they would have two other ones that might have a lesser fee or that they would not have a parking space that's directly available to them in that spot. Well, where would you tell them to park? The, the Woodward right away would be the available for them if they have a car, but we're anticipating that not every single one out of the 20 would have a car. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clatt, Mr. Moore. One last question, parking related. I know you guys have studied this site plan way more than I have, but just one observation. Is there, if for example, the southernmost one, two, three, four, five, six bases, is there a way to simply detach those six, slide them to the south, so maybe then the hood of the vehicle would be underneath that balcony? So really just you're pulling those apart, the drive, li the drive aisle then would shift to the north, reducing that potential impact of that balcony at the corner. So, so I could have, over, I mean, this is a simple observation looking at it on the screen here, but I know you probably already looked at that, but just the thought, can those be slid over to move that maneuvering lane down? It could be. Um, and I guess a lot of times we try and avoid having um, centralized parking where it's, uh, you know, either way, just due sure. to traffic concerns. Um, that is something we could look at. I don't think it would negatively affect um, site too much the only thing i'm worried about is while we're trying to provide as much parking as possible and that would right away it would affect some of the parallel spaces out there and those you know while we intend to use them uh for guests or for you know um any other users they're also available to adjacent sites and whatnot and to that point also we we had kind of thought about that a little bit but if you provide that and have that parking hood or anybody backs into that area we're, we're trying to remove as much of the automobile from the residents going in directly into their unit so we when we first started reconfiguring this we we really were cognizant of that and that's why that whole buffer on the north side or the west side of the building just trying to eliminate that kind of motel feel where you pull up and walk right into your your unit itself but, but it is a good point of, of something that we, we can look at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Martin. Are these going to be yearly or short-term rentals? Um, I think. So, so what, what this is looking for is, is kind of like a three-month increment that we've talked with the owner, but the goal mm -hmm. is to get for more of a year, but like three months, six months, longer term. Uh, that seems to be the typical for micro apartments, where a year is a goal but they want to have the ability and the flexibility for three months, six months, nine months kind mm -hmm. of approach. Okay. And I think that goal kind of aligns with, um, once again, you know, not to target just one area, but you know, at Beaumont Complex, you do have jobs such as traveling nurses and stuff that would like their own apartment um, rather than just having a long-term hotel, so. Um, I'm looking at this 5.5 foot issue. If you have three month leases and there's people moving in and out a lot, you're going to have moving vans. And you said they can use the alley in the back. Is there any back entrance to these units? There is no direct back entrance to those units. We would be able to provide them an access point through the, the kind of the mechanical area to get it. Acknowledge that it is difficult. We do have the other drive aisle that would be the primary access that we would recommend for those for the, the moving trucks or, or box trucks. Any other questions, Ms. Evans? Um, somebody asked this earlier, but how many are uh, there? Was a, there's 20 units. Are they all? They're not all efficiency. Some are. I believe 14. Yes. 14 mm -hmm. are efficiency, mm -hmm. and then the other six are. One bedroom. They range from about 245 uh, to about 450 total square feet for the largest one bedroom. So 14 are efficiency, right. and six are one bedroom. Yes. Yes. And we also include a gym, uh, a small office work area that the, the residents could use, and a laundry in that. So that's how we've kind of utilized uh, the 26 uh, existing hotel rooms to kind of increase the size of a couple and then provide some amenities uh, to, the, uh, to the residents. I have a question. Um, is there going to be any staff on site, like a building manager, or is that 
how does that person then come by to help out? We have to have a resident come on site that will be similar to like a project manager or building or whatever okay. needs to be uh, addressed. Okay, thank you. Just to address one thing, the uh, majority of the units will be furnished. Can you come forward so that Sir. we can hear you? Yeah. Majority of the units will oh, be furnished. Just wait till you, sorry. You got the people at home who can't hear. I apologize. That's okay. A Go ahead. Majority of the units will be uh, furnished. Um, most of the studio studio apartments, just so we are addressing more of the consultants or nearby uh, workers in the nearby area or travel nurses. That's kind of our objective there. So you won't see too many moving trucks if they're furnished rooms. They're 245 square feet. Just a small studio with a bed and everything will be available to them. Small coffee table, two chairs. You know, obviously they'll have some of their belongings, right? But I believe that'll be, you won't have furniture coming in and out for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a question, Mr. Reddy? Okay, I thought I said that. Anyone else? Just quick, so Anthony, was your comment more about is there going to be somebody or somebody working at the facility that's going to require parking space as well? Correct. So it sounds like that's not the case here, mm -hmm. right? No, it okay. will be not just a resident that will be on site. Mm -hmm. So a person living on site will be? Will be right. on site. Okay. All right. No additional uh, vehicles if that's what we are trying to address. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the petitioner? I just think we have to address in fact, with a use variance, they need six. Yep, I was going to let them know. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions for the petitioner, I'm assuming everybody here is to speak on public comment, so you'll have a chance to think after public comment. But there is only seven board members. You need six affirmative votes for the use variance. Five for the non-use, or yes. yes, five for the, the non-use related variance requests. So keep that in mind. We can delay it to the next month. We might have eight or nine board members. We might be stuck with seven again. So just keep that in mind. After public comment, I'll ask you what you want to do. Thank you. All right. For public comment, please come forward. State your name and your comments for the record. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes. And... Good evening, board members. My name is John Rod. My better half and I, Jennifer Audish, we own the property next door and 29862, which is the following property next to it. Um, we just wanted to address, well, welcome Norris to the neighborhood and, and the wonderful thing that he's doing for the city of Royal Oak. Um, and we just wanted to ask him if we could see an aerial view of what the facade of the, of the proposed is going to look like. <clears throat> an aerial, um, Mr. Murphy, do you have an aerial view at all? Um, because the roof plan. Um, Mr. Norris had approached us asking, you know, if he because there's two issues. It looks like he's going to put grass in front of our in front of our building, and that's going to take away four parking spots. Um, in addition to that, there's an issue with the um, trash that sits behind the building. Currently, the mem you know the residents who live there or the in the hotel, they cross over into our property and then they go to the back and they dump. And so we wanted to see what kind of resolution they have for that as well. And we don't want them to put grass in front of our property and take away four parking spots for our patrons. So we wanted to see what kind of resolution we have for that. All right. Thank you. Some of these questions we'll let you address at, at the end, okay? Thank, thank you, sir. Um, anyone else? Sure, whenever. Come on up. Yeah. Bill Harrison, 2729 Trafford, uh, Royal Oak. I live uh, four blocks south of Webster. This Palms is about half a block north and one block off of Woodward. So I'm very interested in what's going on on, on Woodward. Uh, my primary uh, objection to this change of use is that it's going to set a precedent for the change for change of use throughout uh, Woodward. Already there has been an ordinance change that changes the uh, allowable height of buildings along uh, Woodward. 
and the rest of the uh, this lot is deeper than most and uh, but all the other lots are very shallow and it's it's going to be a problem the other thing is uh parking uh, in in downtown royal oak uh the parking requirements have been re uh, reduced to uh one and a half in some cases 1.3 cars but that's because there's all kinds of alternate parking parking decks etc and uh, this is not going to be fair to the uh, other uh, businesses along uh, the Woodward corridor there and as it's already been pointed out you can't count the M dot spots on the uh, on the space uh, there's been a lot of speculation uh, by the appellants uh, as to what kind of tenants are going to be there and whether they're going to have cars or not uh, life has changed. You've got people working from home, and uh, so it's possible that cars could be uh, in the parking lot 24 hours a, a day. So there's no shared parking is where I'm going with this. And uh, the, the other thing is uh, uh, we haven't heard anything about the nature of the... Uh, uh, we've heard a little bit about the nature of the anticipated tenants, and I'm just wondering... Are, are they going to also offer this to uh, Section 8s? And uh, we've had a lot of problems in the, in the past with these motels. At one time we had 11 motels, and now we're down to uh, three. We got rid of seven of them. We had one at the end of our street. And uh, talking about alternate uses, that one was proposed to uh, be office, but uh, it was uh, sold, and there's a... Um, strip mall there now but it could have been it could have been office and these apartments uh, you know these uh, office these motel spaces could easily be offices as well and as I say we've had uh, trouble in the past uh, one of our neighbors in the next block toward uh, Woodward uh, was actually killed by a resident of one of the motels which is now gone and when the uh, Oak Hotel. Oh. Do you have a couple seconds? Sure, wrap up. When the Oak Hotel was on Webster at, uh, at Woodward, there was a murder there. And so I figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> these <laughs> motels have been a public nuisance. Thank okay, you. God. Thank you. All right, thank you for getting that. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to do that for a second there. Hello, my name is Rebecca Conway. I live on Glenwood, which is two streets north of Webster. Um, we talked about the, um, the fact that you referenced that this should be a buffer to the residents. For me, when you look at the street pattern on Woodward, the closest residential street is Burnham, which is one south of me. I live two houses off of Woodward, so I'm directly impacted when the people who live in the residence, the 18 people who have their spots, have people come and visit, and they're looking for overnight parking. I, in my younger years, lived in a 400 square foot apartment, and I had a car. I also had a boyfriend who stayed at my place three to four nights a week. So if you assume 25% of the residents will have overnight guests, they're going to look for parking and the closest residential streets are just north of Webster. And likely those people will park on my streets, on the street that I live in. So when you talk about the residents that are going to be there, um, it's imperative that uh, traveling nurses, they all have cars. They come from somewhere else. I live off of Woodward. From a biking standpoint, your design doesn't have a bike rack to accommodate people who would be in this urban living that doesn't exist in North Royal Oak. It's not downtown Royal Oak. You also mentioned that um, this was, I think, the committee. I wasn't sure what you were quoting. Um, that you're there to protect the historical nature of Royal Oak. The design is not representative of that. To me, this looks like a building from the 70s. It's another brown building with no greenery, 
I mean, there's a couple of trees, but it doesn't give anything or lend anything to the neighborhood. And the fact the parking could impact what my residential neighborhood just north of this um, is, is something for me to be concerned about. And in addition, I looked at the variance. And for this to be, a, for this to be um, approved, you have to show that, there's, that the um, owner, there's a peculiar or exceptional practical exceptions or exceptional hardship of the owner to have this approved, correct? I didn't hear any hardship on the owner for them to have less apartments, to have bigger apartments that would accommodate this parking the, the, the parking spaces that are currently available, or a proposal to buy some of the other structures that are just adjacent to this property, including Siam Spicy, which is closed and has been closed. So I oppose this um, proposal in its current state, and thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Jean Ivory, and um, I represent my family. Uh, we own the two buildings that are just south of um, the site. Um, Dorothy Sheldon uh, is my mother, uh, and so I, listening to all of this, I have spoken with um, Norris. Uh, I've met with him to discuss the trash issue that he's he's already indicated that it's going to be a problem. Um, the leases that we give to our tenants, you know, guarantee that they have parking places for their customers, and so my concern right now, after listening to all of this is when they do run out of parking places, you know they're going to go to the next available building, and that would be the parking that is allocated to our businesses. And who's going to police that? I guess would be my question. So, thank you. Thank you. My name is Adam Bernard. Uh, I live on Glenwood, right next to Rebecca Conway. Um, and uh, I'm also opposing the, um, the waiving of the variances here uh, for some practical reasons, and also, again, because as was stated, the precedent that it's going to set for Royal Oak. Um, I didn't hear any demonstrated need for a multifamily dwelling on Woodward. I saw some pretty pictures that could just as easily be uh, another successful uh, Royal Oak motel like Jim Razor has on 11 Mile. I don't know why this has to be turned into apartments on what is literally one of the worst places you'd want to spend three months to a year living if you've been on Woodward over the past several months. It's not the most desirable location to live full time. Um, uh, and then as far as the parking goes, waiving half the parking spaces, um, they said traffic patterns aren't expected to change. How could they not change if you have people living there three months to a year at a time and as noted, possibly working from home? They pointed out solutions that worked at other uh, apartment buildings in the area that were unworkable here. To me, that's an admission that you have an unfixable problem. Um, there were a lot of assumptions made about residents' behavior, but there was no data to back it up. So I would urge the board. I was, I was here years ago when we uh, got rid of a city motel at the end of Glenwood and put a, what I think is a successful mini business mall there at the end. And I'd love to see that happen in this place if this place doesn't turn into a nice motel like Jim Razor's spot. Thank you. I used to be a school teacher, so I've got a big voice. <laughs> Third graders. My name's Laura Harrison. I live with Bill Harrison. We have lived on Trafford since 1973. Raised two boys. One's in New York and the other is on the other side of Royal Oak. I love my home. And I really am very nervous about what's happening on Woodward Avenue. I know there's changes coming, but this we've got problems, and particularly about the parking. 
We at one time had a uh, building, it's now a uh, gun shop now, but it used to be Acme Sports. And they had no parking except for the few angle county parking spaces. They would have big sales. This is like almost 50 years ago. They had these sales and the people would come to the sale and they'd park all over the neighborhood. They would even pull in people's driveways to park and, and go to the sale. Anyhow, the subdivision, I'm in Woodward Side subdivision, went to the city and said, we got to change this. That is why there is the first block inside, you will notice, is no parking. And this is why, because of the businesses. And also, when uh, they changed it, the zoning for our area was local business. So that, you know, they didn't need, because most of the people would walk to the businesses that lived in there. And they changed it to general business and that added a little bit of problem, uh, but not much. But now that they are changing the, the site plan, and we don't know what's going to happen to Woodward Avenue because they're talking about uh, putting a bike lane on Woodward. Where are they going to put it? They may take away the, what it, they call the county parking, which is the parallel parking. They may take that away and make that a uh, bike lane. Where are they going to put the buses? So, I mean, there's a lot of changes that may be coming. So, I just think that the plan is fine, except there's not enough parking, basically. And that is a problem. Thank you. Anyone else to speak? Come forward. Hello, I'm uh, Annie Moran. Uh, I live next to Rebecca. My husband and I bought our home in 2009. Today we probably couldn't afford to buy it and we love our neighborhood. I want to compliment you fellas on what you've designed. I like the look of it. And since 2009, I feel like the area, that corridor, has really depreciated in, in appearance and value, the closed uh, buildings. At the same time, I think you might be a little ahead of your time. When the queue line started running, I thought, this is fantastic. I'm going to send my son, who was a baby, down to Detroit, and he'll just be able to hop on at the corner because we're three houses away. I don't think transportation is really there for, for people. There are a lot of people in Detroit that probably work at Beaumont, and this would be a wonderful place for them to live, affordable. So my question is, how much is a 245-square-foot apartment on Woodward? I'm just curious if you've thought about that. And, uh, and that's, no, that's it. Thanks. Yep, no problem. If you could direct your questions to anyone else into the mic, and this way people at home can hear. Yeah, sorry about that's that. That's okay. That's all right. I you understand. Know what? I thought I'd been losing my hearing all night because this has been so hard. That's okay. Thank you. Anyone else to comment? Going once, twice, three times. Um, before I ask you gentlemen what you want to do, if you want to just uh, answer any of the questions that you heard that people asked, whether it be the pricing or some of the other ones, you can come forward and, and respond real quick to those questions that, if, they choose. if you choose, you yeah. don't have to. Uh, just really quickly, I was jotting down a couple of notes. As far as the, the, the trash uh, situation, uh, what, we're, what we're addressing for that one is we have on the north end of the building, we have a trash room that allows for uh, the residents to come in, 
it's going to be individual trash uh, uh, bins that would then be put out through to the alley for pickup. So there's not going to be the current situation, which is a trash dumpster that is, is in the alley at the moment. So that, that's that solution. Uh, as far as the parking in front of the, the, the Siam Spicy uh, and, and the, the, the grass that is currently in the plan at the moment, uh, that is kind of from the, the discussions that we've had of what to do with that Woodward right-of-way. Uh, the initial intent, which I believe Mr. Murphy also agreed, that was to have all landscaping in that area, and we had requested to, uh, to, to, to bring back some of that parallel parking. Uh, we, we understand that this encroaches into the CM Spicy's uh, parking at the moment. Uh, we just didn't want to overstep our kind of request to, to request more parallel parking. We would be totally fine with that because it's a non-conforming uh, situation right now. So uh, to eliminate that landscaping and put one or two parallel parking spots, because I think we did a study of that, that is a solution in front of their uh, facility now that we would be happy and willing to, to, to do that as well. Um, so for that, as far as the, uh, the question is for, for the types of residents, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Shaba confirmed no Section 8 housing. What this is is we're, we're taking the current situation for the motel and the residents that are there uh, as it is today and elevating it to a different level uh, and really, uh, you know, uh, hoping and, and planning on the kind of young professional of coming into this area, a different demographic of, of residents that would be utilizing this uh, facility. A lot of concerns on the parking. We understand the parking situation. We understand the concerns with the parking. Uh, what our take is and the request for the variance on that is it is a very, and we all know, a very complicated, difficult site. Uh, we're using the existing building footprint and, and what is there today, and there's not a, a lot of movement to provide spots in an area that just can't get it. I mean, that, that's it. We acknowledge it is very a complicated situation. We just cannot get any more spots on the actual site today. We're uh, relying on that Woodward uh, right of way for the parking. But we want to acknowledge the, the neighbors and their comments. We, we would love to provide more parking in that area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very so much. Anything else on, uh, uh, I'm, the only other item, I mean, it kind of plays to the parking as well as there were talks of, um, you know, with the revitalization of the site um, to dress up the site. And a lot of times, you know, when you think of dressing up site, you think of reducing pervious, but obviously it's kind of a a balance between um, trying to dress up the site um, with landscaping and other amenities as well as trying to solve our parking issue so it was um, kind of a balance of two two evils there so with that the, the buffer that we do have in that area which is the landscape that mm -hmm. we're providing that which was another previous comment we could completely eliminate that and just leave it as is and sneak into more parking spaces, but it wouldn't drastically change the look and feel of the current facility to what we're trying to elevate for the types of residents there. So it is that balance that, that Kevin mm -hmm. mentioned. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I wasn't going to ask any more questions. The questions I have is, do you want us to go forward tonight or do you wish to delay a month? We would like to go forward today. Okay. We understand the six votes uh, and seven are present today. Okay. All right. We'll bring it to this side of the board. Can, can I bring up a, yep. a point of clarification and sort of a public service announcement? Just as a reminder for the board and the public, the city does have an ordinance, local ordinance, which prohibits discrimination against source of income for housing. And we also do follow federal fair housing guidelines, which prohibit that as well. So mm -hmm. I know there was some conversation talk of that and I want to make sure that the record is clear that is not a factor. Thank you Mr. Murphy. All right bringing to the side of the board Mr. Clatt. Just a quick question after hearing the residents concerns about the parking spaces and this might be an obvious one and I'm sure you've done a performer for the development but have you considered a reduction in the number of units? We have. Maybe going to 18 to provide at least one on site for the 18 units. We have done that and, we've, and we have with that balance done the reduction with from the 26 down to the 20. 20 is, is based on the performa and, and what's there that we can really hit on that and unfortunately it's just can't really make the numbers work for that. So going to 18, the, the, the numbers, the math doesn't shake out. It doesn't, yeah, yeah. 
Mm. So what they are hoping for is theoretically if they only get 18 spots that they have two people who are willing to have no spots or otherwise they wouldn't be there in their apartments and be just open. All right. Any uh, Mr. Moore? My question is for Mr. Murphy and I you know, I like to always ask every time something comes up on Woodward about the residential streets and the parking limitations. And as mentioned, Burnham is the closest um, residential neighborhood parking street. And I do see that there are signs that say no parking 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Are there any other parking restrictions in that neighborhood? I see there's something on the bottom of those signs, but they are faded and I cannot tell what it is says. Hmm, I don't know off the top of my head. Perhaps we can do Google Street View, a, a few houses north or south, and that, and that might come into clearer view. Try two different view. signs. I get <laughs> I'll, I'll keep Off the side of the street? Uh, yeah, same. I, I can't see, it, and maybe the resident on that road knows what the green writing is at the bottom of that sign. I'm just... So there, is, there are some restrictions there are on some, parking. It looks like there's a, no parking 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but is there overnight parking, I guess, is my question. And I can't tell what the rest of this sign says. It appears to be a little bit right. Well, Vaughn, um, if anyone's able to figure that out, let us know. Um, is there any comments, discussion, or motions right now? It might be best that we decouple this and do one towards the use, see if that goes, and then go towards the others. If we don't have any more questions for the yeah. petitioner, maybe they can uh, have seats and yep. we can deliberate amongst the board. Yep. Right. Any comments or questions? Ms. Suki. I really appreciate the fact that you want to reuse, repurpose this building. Um, there's too much waste going on, and, and I like the design. I think it looks great. But for a use variance, you have to show that the property can't be reasonably used for purposes permitted. And, and I don't think by saying you want to repurpose this um, and you want to dress up the neighborhood that that meets that criteria. And my concern is if we don't meet that criteria, we can't pass the use variance. Um, Mr. Moore. I did find a sign. It's no parking 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and the green says except Saturday, Sunday, and holidays. So it doesn't appear that there's an overnight restriction on that street. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Ms. Robinson. I just have that same issue that the property could not reasonably be used for any other purposes. There's a plethora of, of uses that this property could be used for other than um, 20 micro apartments. Um, there are other things that could be done here, and I think that the, is going to sway me. The only comment I would have to that is, yes, there can be, but they have higher parking intensities that might limit what that would be able to be done. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clatt, what were you going to say? Yeah, I mean, the, the struggle I have is that this could remain a motel. The owner could, into the future, this could remain a motel. Forever, you know, it could, it could stay like this. So I, I appreciate the thought and the design that, that went into this to, to bring this property up, you know, to make it, I guess, less transient in nature. These are going to be longer-term stays. So that's a struggle that I have. You know, I, I, I understand those the various comments, but that's what I see. My my issues are more with the parking, I guess, than than the use itself. Sure. As far as the use, I think this is a a, a better use for the neighborhood and the neighbors surrounding it. Um, you know, again, with the longer term stays, and I, and I don't have a problem with the use, so. That's right. And I did drive through the parking lot to get the feel of that, and it is tight. I don't, I think there's a huge problem um, with people that are living there. If you have 20 different households in there, at that amount of space for parking. And this is just a Royal Oak issue we have all the way around. And our parking is gold. Um, this is tight. Comments and or motions yet, anyone? Mr. Moore. I make a motion to approve uh, the requested variance A, the use variance. Okay. Is there a second? 
I'll oh, second. Mr. Clare. Okay, Mr. Moore. Um, I think that, you know, as Mr. Murphy suggested, we should get the use variance um, out of the way before we even discuss some of these um, other ones, and I think that this is a good way to break that up, and like I said, I don't have a particular problem with this particular use. Okay. Mr. Clack. No, I stated my reasons earlier. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Reddy. Yeah, uh, I'm a little torn on it. Um, I, I, the parking, I think, will be a separate issue. But as far as the use goes, I think the petitioner did make a good case that it is difficult um, for general business in this uh, on this lot. And we have had other people come for, uh, you know, on Woodward uh, requesting variances and uh, having difficulties um, with the business uh, you know, on this, on Woodward. So I, I'm in favor. I mean, I think that the parking is gonna be a separate issue, but I think this is a good use. Hmm. Any other comments? Well, I'm gonna be for this variance, partially because it's already a non-conforming use, and as you've heard from many of the public, a lot of them really don't like how the motel is right now. And it's a similar statute as the motel is, and it's a living, instead of a temporary living, it's now more a little bit more permanent. So it's not really that different of a current use it is, other than how it operates with, instead of leasing a room night to night, now it's more month to month or three months a year. Um, Parking is a different thing. So because of that, that's the, the practical difficulty they have is they already have a non-conforming use that it wasn't their fault that they have a non-conforming use already. And they're just trying to make a similar type non-conforming use. Um, and at the same time make the neighborhood better by having that non-conforming use people don't like go away and have at least another uh, use there that potentially could be helpful to the surrounding area. Um, see, the, we've already went over, it's not created, they didn't create the, the use variance hardship, essentially wouldn't be changing the characteristic of that area because you already have people who are staying there overnight, now it's still the same thing, just from a hotel to apartment, um, and it wouldn't really change the use of that area much from what it already is. Um, yes, as stated, you could change it to any other business, but as I believe Mr. Murphy would back up, any other business that could go in there has a lot higher parking use intensity than living with a hotel or, or apartments. So, yeah, you can make a different use there, but you're going to require a lot more parking, which would make it even worse for everybody. Uh, the variance would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as the pro other property owners. That could be a push. I could see the plight of the landowner. We've already talked is this is a unique property and the use already is a non-conforming and the hardships have not been created. Again, they didn't create it. So because of all that, I have no problem with granting the use variance as requested. Any other comments? Yes, Ms. Robinson. If there's something is that's a non-conforming use right now, I think that trying to make it more conforming is the general direction we want to go. Correct. Um, and I think that is my feeling that trying to put this into that direction. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Murphy. The second floor has no problem being the multifamily. It's only the first floor for living. So already they could have the second floor turn into living space and they're just trying to bring up the first floor to make that the same as the second floor, which would already be allowed per the current zoning in the area. So that's sort of a hardship in itself that they're allowed the second floor but not the first floor in that same space. So, All right, if there's no other comments, we'll move to a vote, please. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Although we have a vote of five to two, the variance does not pass. It needed a six affirmative votes. affirmative votes. So in which case then is there a motion in the 
opposite direction to clarify needed? Or Mr. Murphy, or there, the other, there can be for okay. for record, sure. So a motion to deny. Okay. All right. I will make a motion to deny the use variance. I do not think that there's an unnecessary hardship to the applicant here. I would love to see a better use of this property. I would love to see the motel go, but just because it's better than the motel doesn't mean that it fits the ordinance. And I think we have to give due respect to our ordinances. Okay. Right. I think we've already talked enough about this. If there's anyone else with additional discussion points on this? No, nope. all those in favor of the uh, denial of the, uh, would be? Motion to deny. Motion to deny. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Are we saying aye? Yeah. And against? Nay. 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 Okay. So the variance is not approved because it requires five affirmative votes. Okay. So, so you can either withdraw the remaining variances or the board can act upon those. Would you like, which means, what you're confused about is right now we have just denied the fact of, because even though you had five affirmative votes, you needed six. So it didn't pass, so that means you can only stay with what you st it currently is, which is a motel, or something else that is allowed in that general business zone. Or upper stories could be living and the bottom stories would have to be something within the business zone. If, if I'm correct on that, Mr. Murphy. So with that, if it, if it remains as a motel, mm -hmm. do the other five or other four variance requests, are they relevant as far as the parking goes or not? No. So is that? No, because you have a, and Mr. Murphy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you're already mm -hmm. using that as a non-conforming use in its non-conforming reality. Mm -hmm. You're not changing it, so therefore what you have there is good. Yes. It's only if you change something you'd yeah, have to. Yeah, we change it to the yeah. So it, we can, the client, our client could leave it as a motel and continue with it as a motel, without upgrading or anything even on that. Okay. So it would be appropriate for the board to take some action or for for the petitioner to withdraw. The board can just take action. Uh, to oh. so just so I'm clear, we can leave it 26 units, keep the top units. Uh, apartments and so we can keep the same parking spaces. I believe that'll create a conflict, but that's also okay with, I mean, it's a bigger conflict for the city or the- I'm not so sure on that point. That might be something you no. have to- No, has to say the current use. Yeah, you were denied as, the as use As a current variance. use though, it could, we could potentially use the top units as apartments and the bottom units as a motel, correct? No. No, because I believe it was stated before that motel is a non-conforming grandfather. Correct. Use. Would have to be a permitted or special end use. Mm -hmm. So it just stays motel as is. Stay. That's what they see. That's kind of the approach. Okay. So would you like us to probably vote the rest of them down or just withdraw them because it was related They're to They're not it? applicable any longer They're, to your proposal. Yeah. I would say that we just withdraw yeah. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So unfortunately, your proposal is not has not been approved. Okay. Apologies. I understand. Thank yep. You. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Just if make sure make sure you're clear as well as everybody else. It did require for the changing the use. It required six affirmative yes, votes. Yes. Yeah. Just for everyone else. Yeah. Oh, everyone else as well. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. I believe that was the last of the new business. It was. Uh, there's no other business, correct? No. All right, so then uh, general public comment. If there's any general public comment, people may come forward. Well, wait a minute. Maybe people are just walking out. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no one else here for public comment, please be quiet and usher yourself out into the lobby. <laughs>
Thank you. Turn on that siren again. <laughs> All right, it doesn't sound like there's any other public comment. Uh, is there the ministry motion for adjournment? Yeah. Anyone want to? Minister Reddy. I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? <laughs> Mr. Moore. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we're done. Thank you. Thank you.